Okay, we're gonna go back to doing the painting now because this is nice and dry. And you notice on the rocks here, we've got outcroppings that look like rocks and we're going to paint them in that fashion. What you wanna do is take some of your yellow and some of your browns and uh, a little bit of the black and thin them all out in some water real thin. I did that already here, so I'm all set to go. We'll start with the, uh, well, a little bit of the brown first, really. And just dab it where you want rocks to be. And you notice it's just a faintness. That's all you really want to do. You want to bring the white that's in the plaster out, but you also want to bring out some of the mineral content look in the rock. And you just want to find a couple of spots where it looks like it might be a rock protruding through the grass. Okay, we've got a number of rocks now painted. Let's go to the next color. Yellow just gives a slight highlight, but it brings just a little shading into it. And then you come back with the black. So it just is a black wash. You notice how it wants to get in all the little crevices and cracks, and it kind of accents everything. Makes it now look like it might be a rock there. Now you want to come back. We're going to do all the rest of the land down here and paint it. I'm going to use just a little bit of water. You'll see me going back to it from now and then. And a little bit of the green first and put it on. Maybe just a little bit of brown mix into it. Gives it kind of a dirty green background. Something like you would find on land. You're going to come back and put grass on it too, but you want to have somewhat of a brown color to it just in order that it looks like it's the dirt underneath. Now I'll come back later on and touch up where it has to be red for the lava. At least we'll start out right. Now what we do have to do is come back though and finish up the sides over here that we started bringing our theme around. So let's do the roof up in there now and that of course is nothing but black. I'll take a little bit of water to thin it a little. Okay. Now, of course, the only other thing to do is our meteor itself. Let's think about it. There's probably, you see blacks and browns in the rock. So let's work with those first. Get a basic color on there. Towards the back where it's cooler, because the meteor is going to be really hot up in the front here. Well, that's where we'll have all the reds and yellows and into the backs we'll put the blacks and the browns. Notice how the blotchiness makes it look like the rock is, is uh, textured, has pits in it, holes and that. And it really helps when you have a little bit of each color in there because then you don't have any uniformity. It looks more natural. Now we can just kind of dry it out a little bit, the brush, because we're going to go into the other colors down here on the bottom portion of it. And we'll go to the reds and yellows. So we need to take and do the bottom portion in the yellows and just kind of pull it up in a dry brush type fashion so that it looks like it's streaming off of it. You get the effect of it just shooting up that way to where all the heat is being pulled back as it's coming back with such huge velocity. Such great speed. Let's get some reds in it too. And of course we need to do the tail end off here too. See if you ever saw a comet shooting across, you know, a shooting star, that's what you see is that streak of fire going behind it as it's burning up coming into the atmosphere. That's what they're trying to represent here is the fire behind it. Let's get a couple of streaks of the red going through here too, where it's coming off hot and flaming. In fact, while we're doing red, let's also get the lava over here. Of course, down inside. And you know they kind of fire little bits and 
chunks out too, don't they? So let's get some fire going up the wall here. Of course, you know, if you don't make the noises, it doesn't work. Let's get some yellow in there too. That's really hot. Okay, we're gonna do the, or the uh, trees and stuff in the side over here, so we have to have our forest. Now there's several ways of doing it. Good old conventional way of paint brushes. We're not conventional. We wanna show you a few other ways that you can make something interesting and didn't even think you could. Your mom's got an old sponge. Cut little pieces of the sponge. Dab that in there. You notice they're all full of holes here. That creates a really interesting look when you go to dab it on there. It gives kind of like little leaves all over the place, which work really good. Now you also want to get and put in your trees. So let's try to wisp some trees into it. We just start at the base and kind of wisp it up. You just want to give some branches here. Work some of your black into the green. So it looks like it's way in the background. You just want to catch the just the tip of the brush, if you can, to give it little thin branches if possible. Okay, now that you've got what looks like a background of wood in front of you, dark colors, you come back with your green again and go over those so that you blur them in. That way you've got depth of some of them showing, some of them not showing. Notice I keep the yellow all going in the same direction so that it looks like it's getting the highlight off of the sun where the sun has been sitting here just beaming itself up in that direction so it'll raise out to it. That'll finish that for you. It's starting to look pretty good now, isn't it? Now that this is dry, let's add just a little bit more heat to that. Get that yellow. Now this is all just about getting that look you want. Now that it dried and you want to get just a little bit more emphasis on a color, you can come back and instead of blurring it, come back with just a nice hot white right there, or hot yellow, hot red. It enables you to accent and bring out more of it. Because let's face it, color just makes the whole thing. You can feel the energy from it. There we go. Now we're happy. Now I'll let this dry and then we can come back and do the foliating, putting in the grasses and trees and bushes. And we're just about there. Before we get into the foliage, there's one thing I noticed that we couldn't improve on yet. The volcano doesn't have any smoke. Now in the Horizon kit, it also comes with a polyfiber white that you can use for clouds if you're making something that needs it. But in this case, we could use some smoke. So let's tear some of this off and kind of form it up a little bit to look like smoke coming out of the volcano. Just like a little funnel cloud in a way. And then what you want to do is get some of the black dirty up the water and stick it in. Oh, much better, <laughs> much better. There's our gray smoke. Now we'll just let that dry and we can go on with the rest of the foliating, the grasses and the bushes. 